six years of the Jeremy Carl show, and you might well remember nine-year-old Reese, who came along with his parents, Tina and Alan. Now, their world had been turned upside down when young Reese was diagnosed with leukaemia and had to undergo gruelling treatment to save his life. Well, we surprised him to an incredible day that this young man will never, ever forget. Let's take a look back. Today, Reese is taking part in a prize-giving assembly at his school. And I'm on my way there with his parents, Tina and Alan, and his sister, Shannon, to give him the surprise of his life. Three guesses, who is it? Dan. Oh. <laughs> Hello, mate. Hello. Hello. Jeremy Carl, how are you? Sit down. <laughs> you all right? <laughs> <laughs> They're all grinning. Somebody told me that you really like Coronation Street. A lot. So I thought, if it's all right with you, that, that I could give you the whole day off school and then we could go in a really swanky car and we could go to Coronation Street and you can meet lots of people and you can be in the Rovers and you can come with me and you can have a fantastic day. Would you like to do that? Is it all right if he has the day off? Where's the teacher? Is it all right if he has the day off? Yeah, the... Come on then, we don't want to be in school. See you all later, you carry on doing your work, we're out of here. Are you coming? Come on then, lad. See you later. See you later. See you later, guys. Remember that day when they actually uttered those words, your son has leukaemia? Yes, yeah, it's, it's like I say, it's like the dead air stood still. Um, so the yeah. idea of allergy, you must have feared the worst, I guess. Well, Tina, Tina, you hear the word leukaemia and you think cancer is going to die? And in the first two weeks on his treatment, he was fine. He was having steroids and he was having different things, different parts of chemotherapy, not a problem. And then about three weeks into it, um, he had a reaction to a steroid called dexamethasone, which is on the programme, everybody, everybody has it, all the kids have it. And he had this uh, reaction, and basically it scrambled his brain um, in respect that um, it was making him nervous, it was making him anxious, um, and, and making him do weird things. On one occasion, um, he started going like this and putting his fingers in his mouth and biting, and he pulled his fingernails off. No painkillers or anything, he just pulled his fingernails off and oblivious to it. And then one day, he had ulcers in his mouth and he, he pushed his cheek into the middle of his teeth and he bit. And a little tiny patch of blood came like that. So they, they were making gum shields. And in all this, he didn't sleep for about eight weeks. And the steroids got into his brain, as you know, and he just couldn't yeah. sleep. We were taking it in turns, coming back and two from the hospital. Um, he kept saying he wasn't in any pain and it, it, he just, went he just it. bit all his mouth, he had these ulcers all over him and he'd pulled his fingernails out, he was pulling his hair out in chunks and mm. if you asked him was he in pain, he used to know but he, he just couldn't feel the pain. His hair didn't fall out at first with the chemo and um, he flew into a rage one day and he got like a little sick ball and he was pulling his hair out like just that. Just sat there like that. So I, I, I said to Tina, you didn't want to get his hair shaved, did you want to keep his hair as long as possible? Well the doctor said all his hair might not fall out. So I was kind of hoping that it wouldn't. But well, I was thinking <laughs> it was going to damage his hair, it was going to make himself bald when it grew back anyway because he pulled the roots out. So I got the, the, the nurse on the ward and I got the, the clippers and I said, look, you can shave mine and I'll shave yours. And we sat there and we shaved our heads. Um, yeah. Um, you must have thought you were going to lose him, right, didn't you? But yeah. All the time or did you just... When he didn't sleep, I didn't sleep. I'd sit up at the side of his bed all night, looking at him, and making sure he wasn't biting, and because he didn't sleep at all. Mm -hmm. And um, he was just—I just sat there watching him all the time. And there's one night when we were both sat there, and I sat there and thought to myself, "So this is what it feels like when your kid's dying." <laughs> Coronation Street set has not been open to the general public for 11 years, so this is very special. Are you excited? Yeah. And I'm thinking I'd like to show you around, but I don't really, if I'm honest, know uh, where to take you, because this is actually my first time as well. So I thought I would get a friend of mine, okay, from Coronation Street to show us around. So I'm not going to tell you who it is. All is. I'm, I'm going to give you a clue. How this man ended up with the prettiest woman on Coronation Street is beyond me. Say hello. Hello, mate. Hello. Are you Reese? Yeah. How are you doing? You're right. Do you know who I am? Yeah, you're 
Yeah, I am, yeah, I'm called Craig, how are you doing? Okay. Um, I've here, uh, got a bit of a tour of the street. Call the shop. Hello. 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 Hello nice viewer and I can't wear it because of the label on it so I've signed that for you a bit like my caps that I wear oh, so you've got your own there mate so Reese, one final thing do you want to come and see some actual filming done on Coronation Street okay. alright Phil two cameras, yeah? Whilst he's been on the street with me today, we've been busy installing one final surprise in his playhouse. So everybody, but most of all, Reese, have you had a great day? Yeah. You've been amazing, you really have. You've amazed me with how brave you are. Guys, have you had a... Has it been fun watching him? Oh, yeah. yeah. Especially his face when he saw you. <laughs> yeah, supreme disappointment. And, and that's it, you see, because then I have to go back and do my job now, but I just wanted to say it's an absolute pleasure. It really is. And, I, and I, your bravery is outstanding, and I'm so proud to have met you, all right? But you see, there's something else as well. It's one more surprise. Come on, me. Come on. Here, come in. Come on. Oh. Reese first. Come on, Reese. I just thought, hold on a minute, hold on a minute, I just thought, what else does he want? Any ideas? After we finished filming on Coronation Street, I was chatting to Reese, and he told me he was the biggest Manchester United fan, so I arranged to take him and his old man to watch his favourite team play, and this is what they told me recently. We all loved coming on the show, and he loved meeting everybody who worked there and getting to see the stars of Coronation Street. Reese had a great time at the Manchester United game with Jeremy, and he especially loved meeting Sir Bobby Charlton. He really likes Jeremy, and he tells everybody that they're best friends. We are. Uh, Reese is doing well health-wise and is walking a lot better. He still has a year of chemotherapy left, but he is doing really, really well. I'd like to wish Reese all the best with his treatment. We had a fantastic day on the street, a great night at the footy. He's a special and incredibly brave young man, and the very best to him and the family. Right, I am out of time.